All right, in our last video, uh, we learned how to create our basic totem shapes using an inner support system. Uh, I've created another one here. Um, and so this, if I put these two together, I would definitely meet the 20 centimeter uh, requirement. Plus I have two totems, I, I would be good to go. Um, in this video, I wanna show you a little bit uh, of some of the options that you can maybe choose. So thinking about uh, surface textures, how you can manipulate the clay to get some cool results. Uh, also how to add on pieces, right? So, so maybe I want to make a wing or uh, something like that. So I'm going to show you some of those options. Uh, this video is really just going to show you how to experiment, explore, play with the clay, um, and see what we can do. Okay, so I'm going to resituate the camera here and then we'll get going. All right, so uh, here we go. We're going to just explore a little bit. Uh, one of the things I want to look at first uh, is surface texture. Okay, so when we're working with clay, generally the first texture we're going to think about is just smooth, right? Like, you know, that's kind of the first um, thought process. Okay, so as we're working with this clay, smooth is definitely uh, a texture. So if you want to go with smooth, that's okay. Um, one of the easiest ways to get to smooth is if we just take a sponge with water, we squeeze out all the water, so it's just uh, wet but not not uh, dripping. Uh, and then I want to support the clay, and I can just use that along the surface. I don't want to get it too wet, but I can definitely work out some of those little minor issues, right? And this would be a good thing to do at this stage when the clay is still soft. Later, I'll show you some techniques uh, to find that further. But we can definitely get smooth if that's if that's what you're shooting for. Okay, and you can continue to work that. Um, but really, I think the exciting thing about clay, obviously, is that it's a malleable material, right? It's soft. Uh, we can make a mark and it's going to hold that history of the mark. And I think that's really neat. So I want to explore uh, at this point how we can make some different textures. What are some of the options? What are some of the tools that we have in the classroom that you can uh, work on? You'll notice here I've, I've uh, just taken some clay. I've smushed it into a little pancake. I like to have this near me whenever I'm thinking about surfaces and textures, just as an experimental, it's almost like scratch paper. I'm going to do some uh, surface work here just to kind of test to see what I like. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want to show you um, is just the idea of, of maybe drawing into your clay. And we have some different tools to do that. Uh, I like this tool a lot. Uh, it's a rubber tipped tool. All right, I'm going to draw flat and then I'll kind of show you, but literally you can draw anything you want, right? So if I wanted to do um, whatever, <laughs> I can maybe draw a palm tree or something, fireworks. Uh, we can create whatever designs we want to uh, just by pressing into the clay, right, and drawing. So obviously that's uh, going to be unique to you, whatever you want, right? Uh, there's also an idea of maybe we want to carve out the clay, right? And so we have some tools like this that are called hoop tools, right? And so they have some different sizes and shapes we have in our uh, clay storage. And so maybe I want to uh, create a pattern where I carve out some clay. Okay, that's an option, right? If we can see that. Right, so now this is a little bit softer, so it's it's kind of mushing the mark, but you know, we could do some different surface qualities where we carve out the clay. Um, we could also think about uh, pressing and impressing texture into the clay. All right, so you know, you, it could really be anything. Here's a, a just a small little gear. All right, if I just give that some gentle pressure into the clay and lift, you know, you're gonna get. Oops, I could probably press a little harder. All right, so there's a gentle gear shape. Um, all sorts of things, right? I like to play around, right? I, I have a golf ball. This is one of my favorite textures. If I just roll it around the clay, I get a pretty fun little like uh, bumpy surface. We have all sorts of stuff. Uh, we have a, a wide range of stamps, right? These are made from clay and then fired and they come out uh, ceramic. So I could, I could use these um, to impress into the clay a design if I wanted to. Uh, here's a fake rock texture that I like to use quite a bit where I just roll that into the clay surface and I get like a organic rock sort of shape if we can see that, a nice texture. 
uh, when that gets painted, it looks really nice, uh, like a rock. Uh, but all sorts of things, right? I, you know, you can play around. And, and again, that's why I like to have this uh, sort of sketch paper, scrap paper uh, testing, where I can test these um, stamps and tools and drawings before I actually go to my piece, okay? The nice thing is I have two sides to this too. Um, the other really nice tool uh, that we have are these texture pads, right? And so if, you know, this is a wood texture, right? So if I lay this on my uh, clay and I give it some pressure, uh, I can maybe grab a rolling pin again to give it some pressure, right? Or just use my hand. That's really nice. And that gets you some cool, um, cool textures as well. If you can see that, that wood texture. Uh, I love this, this like steel, uh, sort of texture. We also have um, like a fish sort of. Let's see what this looks like. That's kind of cool. We get a, a fish scale uh, sort of texture as well. So all of those, play around with them. Uh, I encourage you to explore those and see what's going to fit with your design that you've already thought through and, and what you want to do. Now, if you are going to use the texture plates, um, it's a little bit more challenging. We There we go. It's a little bit more challenging um, to do that on a piece without your uh, structure, right? Because I have to press pretty hard. If I don't have the structure in there, it's going to be deformed and it's going to be hard to get a really nice impression. So if I am going to use, if I know for sure I've tested, it's like, oh, I love that fish scale. Uh, I really am going to use that that's for sure. Um, I've created this piece. It still has the inner structural support. Uh, I would suggest going with that um, still in there when you create your texture. So I could take this. It still has this, so it won't really collapse. I can put this right on the mat. Just give it a quick roll. Okay, and that creates a nice texture for me. All right, now the, the, the only downside of this is that I, I have to be really careful how I handle this um, because I don't wanna you know, mess up that texture. It would be really hard to put back in there. So just being really cautious of this, but I could take out my support if I'm really careful not to uh, mess up the surface from there. So if I am gonna do like a whole surface with using these texture mats, probably doing it before you take out the support is probably a good idea, okay? So after you've explored a lot of those textural qualities uh, and how you want your surfaces to be, I wanna show you really quickly how we might want to achieve those add-ons. Remember, the requirements of the assignment are 20 centimeters tall, at least two totem pieces, and then at least one add-on feature. Okay, so again, that's anything that we're gonna add on to our totems that stick out. You might wanna do more than that, but I, I did wanna just require one. So, this uh, should look pretty familiar. This, the steps of this shouldn't be too hard, but I have some clay here. I've already wedged this up. Uh, I like to actually, when I'm working, just wedge up a bit of clay at the start of class, keep it in some plastic over here so it doesn't dry out, and then I can just use, use it when I need it, okay? But here's some clay that I've wedged up. Uh, let's see, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna make a wing. That we've, we've already kind of uh, used that example. So grab a bit of clay, uh, and this is just hand molding, right? I might just kind of say, all right, well, I know that my wing is gonna be tapered. It's gotta be a pretty flat sort of object here. You could spend as much time on this. I'm just going really quickly here. I want it to be pretty flat. I want it to have a little curve, give it some life. Okay, before I put it on, I might wanna do a little detail work. I don't know, you can play around with that. Whatever, right, I'm going a little faster. I would slow down, but. Um, whatever, okay, so you, you've worked your piece, you got it set. Um, this will be easier to work on probably before you attach it, but whatever you think. Okay, so there's my quick wing. All right, now I'm gonna attach it onto my totem piece here. Uh, I do wanna think about that connection surface area, right? So the more uh, clay on clay you have touching, the better, right? If I were obviously try to attach it like this, that's a really uh, dangerous connection because not a lot of clay surface area touching. So 
uh, if I am going to attach this here, I do want to kind of create a little bit more surface area, right? I can just tap that on the table, right? Or I could pinch this out so that I have a little bit more surface area and that's going to be helpful, all right, when I attach. All right, now this is the same as when we were wrapping our clay around our support and we're attaching two pieces together. Remember we said we have to use the technique of score and slip, okay? No different here. We're attaching one piece of clay to another, score and slip. So again, I wanna use this serrated rib tool is really nice, it's got these teeth. Uh, anything that scratches the surface of the clay up, but this, this I think works best. Uh, I do have some forks uh, that some people like to use a fork uh, to score. Uh, score the area of their clay. Okay, uh, I'm gonna let's see just pick a pick pick where I want to do it That looks good right there. So I'm just gonna give a gentle rock so I can see All right, I can see where my score marks are give this a light score Okay, my slip is here Like I said, a little slip is just fine, so I don't need a, a ton. I'm just gonna put a little slip on there. Okay. Find my score marks. And I like to just wiggle it. And that wiggle is gonna really help that slip kind of combine uh, all those areas. Okay, and just smooth, compress. Make sure those two pieces of clay are perfect. Good. Now, little trick with this, right? I have this piece of clay, this wing. It's pretty heavy, right? Uh, this clay is pretty soft, and what I don't want it to do is sink, right? So if gravity takes its toll after a little while, it's going to fall off, and I don't want that. So a little trick I like to do is just give it a little support. So we can grab just some extra clay, right? I might just stick it under here and if I squeeze here it's gonna go up and it's just gonna hold that wing in place give it a little extra ability to stay in place right now I might want to do this on a board so I don't have to move it later when I'm done and ready to store my work uh, and this would stay in here maybe for a day or so until this clay really has a chance to set up uh, that slip is really going to bind, um, and then I can take the support out, no problem, okay? Um, but that's how we want to add on. Those are our add-on pieces uh, that we could put, such as a wing. You could also do, like, really little things, like textural things. Maybe some people, like, I don't know if you've seen, like, studded jackets or something. Score and slip first, but just going to show you, you know, maybe I want to do little studs, and that's going to be... Um, a design sort of surface element that I do. I'm going to put these all over my piece, right? Those are add-on elements as well. So uh, a lot of different options. Uh, I think at this stage, it's really important just to experiment, play around, get yourself a, a scrap piece of clay that you can really test a lot of those surfaces on. Uh, and this is great. We can just recycle this, right? This is still workable. At the end of class, I can put it in, my work, in the workable bin. No harm, right? Just learned a little bit about the clay. Uh, and we'd be good to go, okay?